Hey there, my friend, welcome. My name is Dr. Anthony Balduzzi. I'm the founder here at the Fit Mother Project. My team and I are the health and fitness experts for busy moms in their 40s, 50s, and 60s who wanna lose weight, tone up, start exercising, and get both themselves and their families healthy. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about weight training for women over 50. What you need to know if you wanna start weight training to build some muscle, to keep your bones healthy and strong, I mean, to really combat a lot of the effects that happen as women get older, losing bone mineral density, losing muscle mass, getting a slower metabolism, weight training is the key, but it has to be done right. So what we're gonna do in this video is cover a little bit of the overview of what we need to do when we're in our 50s and 60s and beyond when it comes to weight training. And I'm actually gonna give you a specific workout. And we're gonna hop behind the gym here and I'm gonna demonstrate every set and rep for you um, so that you know exactly what you can start doing this week, a very simple routine that's safe on your body, that'll produce great, great results and start you getting stronger. So that's what we have on the table. I'm really happy you're here on this video. Let's dive on in. All right, so let's get started in today's video on weight training for women over 50. Um, the first thing I wanna talk about is quickly the benefits of strength training and why it's so important, particularly after 50, when there's a lot of hormonal changes happening around the perimenopause, menopause time, estrogen levels are going lower. And what happens is estrogen is very protective for our bones. So as estrogen goes down, bone mineral density starts to drop. And this is why women are at a huge risk for fractures as they get older. And this strength training is great because it actually combats that. The weight training itself actually makes the bone stronger. It actually prevents the loss of muscle mass as we age. And as we lose our muscle and we get weaker, our metabolism slows too. So that means we start to put on weight and fat and we're losing more muscle and the whole vicious cycle starts to repeat. Again, weight training helps fix that. As you continue to build some lean tissue as you get older, tone up, get strong, your metabolism increases as well. So stronger bones, better energy, better looking body. And trust me when I say that you can build a lot of great muscle and get into fantastic shape in your 50s and 60s, even if you haven't really exercised before. The key is smart strength training. And the way we recommend people start strength training in their 50s is full body weightlifting twice per week. And what I mean by full body is you're working every single body part on let's say Monday and you rest for a few days because recovery is absolutely essential and then you train again on Thursday or Friday. And that's not to say you're not doing any exercise in between. You could be walking, doing a little bit of cardio, doing other things. But when it comes to weight training, we want to give the body a stimulus through the training um, to actually get the muscles to, uh, to have the adaptive response and then we want to recover and then we want to train again and we want to rest two days per week is the right frequency and full body because we don't want you doing just arm day, just doing little curls and tricep extensions and stuff like that. This is the kind of strength training that produces the best results. So I have a little workout for you. We're gonna hop behind me here in the gym in just a second. I'm gonna demonstrate all of this for you. But the philosophy is I want you to break your workouts up into a couple main body parts. I want you to start your strength training sessions with doing some leg and some glute work. Two main types of exercises in particular. The first one is a squat. I'm gonna show you how to do front squats. And the second main type of leg exercise is some kind of deadlift or hip hinging motion. So squatting or squatting down, deadlifts and hip hinging, we're hinging from the hips and that's gonna be more focused on the glutes and the hamstrings. So we're gonna do those two exercises and then we're gonna move on to dumbbell rows, which are amazing for your back and your arms. Then we're gonna do some chest pressing for your chest, your shoulders and your triceps. We're gonna do some shoulder pressing to further hit the, the shoulders and triceps. We're gonna finish with some direct arm work and we're gonna do a little bit of core work. So we're gonna get this entire workout done. I think this whole thing is gonna take roughly around 35 to 45 minutes. You do this twice per week and you'll be on your way to building muscle and getting stronger in your 50s. So without further ado, we're gonna hop behind the gym. I'm gonna demonstrate one set of each of these exercises, give you some ideas on some sets and reps and give you a challenge to try this out this week. Let's hop over to the gym. All right, so let's kick off this full body weight training workout off. And to start, we're gonna be doing our two leg exercises, the front squat and the stiff deadlift. Again, targeting the quads, the glutes, the hamstrings. So for the squats and for the deadlifts, we're gonna be doing three sets of eight to 15 reps. And I'm gonna demonstrate one set of the squats to start off with you. So first off, we're gonna get a pair of dumbbells. We're gonna pick them up and we're gonna put them right here um, on your shoulders. And you can either rest them up here like this, or you can rest them here like this. But I want you to squeeze them Stay nice and tight just like this, feet shoulder width, and I want you to keep your core nice and tight. And when you're in this position, I want you to sit back like you're sitting down into a chair, nice and slow, right to here, pause, come right back up. So again, coming down, pause, up. I'm gonna do eight reps just to demonstrate this for you.
eight. So at this point, I'd put the weights down. I would rest for around 60 seconds, do another set of squats. Rest for 60 seconds, do my final set of squats. And the reason I think the front squat is a great exercise is because it not only works your legs, it also works your core. Those weights are gonna to wanna to drag you forward, so you have to stay upright. You have to really engage those abs as you're sitting down, so it's a great quad, glute, hamstring builder. Second exercise, after we've done three sets of eight to 15 reps, is the stiff deadlift with the dumbbells. Amazing for building up your hamstrings and your glute strength. So the two types of leg motions, as I mentioned before, are squatting and hip hinging. That's why we're doing one of each. One squat, one hip hinge with the deadlift. So for the deadlift, I want you to get the weights, put them kind of out in front of your feet, just like this. Once you get a nice flat back, put tension in your hamstrings. So your legs are not necessarily completely stiff, but there's a slight, slight bend in them. And now you're gonna pull up, squeeze your glutes just like this, come right back down. Pause at the bottom, right back up, come down. Now, if your legs start to bend slightly as you come down, that's fine. If your legs can stay totally stiff on the way down, that is also fine too. I do recommend that you keep the dumbbells as close to your legs as possible, not quite dragging, but they're coming down. Pause, use your glutes and your hamstrings to come right back up. Down, pause, come right back up and squeeze. A couple more reps. Down, pause, up, use your glutes to come through, squeeze that butt hard at the top. Down, do three more. Up, come down nice and slow, pause, Fire it right on up, squeeze those glutes, and one final rep. Down, pause, up, squeeze. So that is how you do a dumbbell stiff deadlift. Now that I did one set, I would rest for around 60 seconds, and do another set. Rest, do our third set in the eight to 15 rep range. So those are our two leg exercises. And now we're gonna move on to our back training with our rows using probably a lighter pair of dumbbells because you can squat and deadlift more than you can row probably. But we'll just use these for the purpose of this demo. I want you to set up similar to where you were on that deadlift, except I want you to both have that flat back, butts like this, weights are right here, head is in line. Now the reason I want you to do a, a row like this is because it keeps your back and your low back very strong and engaged. I want you to pull up, squeeze, right on down. We're gonna do six to 15 reps here. Three, four, five. I want you to pull your shoulder blades together as you come back, pause at the top, a couple more. And the reason I like this exercise after the dumbbell stiff deadlifts is it's still engaging those hammies and those glutes. So you're getting more leg work while you're rowing with your back. Last one down. So that is how you do the dumbbell row. Two arms. You see a lot of people do these on the bench dumbbell rows with one arm. Also a good exercise, but I think it's even better when you're bent over two arm because you're engaging that core, you're engaging your glutes, everything's staying active at the same time. So that is the dumbbell row. Again, three sets, six to 15 rep range. You can go a little heavier on this if you wanna go in the six rep range, but you're totally fine doing up in those higher rep range, 10, 12, 15. After the dumbbell rows, we're gonna work the chest, the shoulders, the triceps with some chest pressing. So I'll move our bench right over here. Just like this. So when we're pulling and we're doing the back exercises with those rows, it's working the back and biceps. When we're pushing, we're working our chest, our shoulders, and our triceps. So this is why after doing our rows, our pulling, now we're gonna do our pushing. So we're gonna do a classic dumbbell bench. So you're gonna get at the end of this bench here, get your weights like this, bring them tight into your hips, and you're gonna roll back. And just like this, feet are on the floor, shoulders are underneath you, take a deep breath, press up, and squeeze at the top. Slowly control the weights as they open up, Pause, press. We're also gonna do this in the six to 15 rep range. Down, pause, a couple more. Press, down, nice and slow. Pause, press, really feel those muscles contract. 
Control the weight, pause, press. We'll do two more. Down, pause, press. Last one, down, pause, press. When you're done, you lower the weights. If they're light enough that you can do a sit up, that's fine, but don't be afraid to lightly drop the weights. What I don't want you to do is feel like um, you have to hurt your shoulder when you're lowering the weights. So with these pressing motions, we're gonna probably rest around 60 seconds in between each of those sets. And I really want you to focus on um, using a weight that is challenging for you. Not necessarily getting to the point where you can't do another rep. I would say maybe you have two or three reps in reserve. Um, but you're getting pretty close where you're picking a weight that's not so light that you, you stop at 15, but you could have done another 10. Um, but it's heavy enough that if you stop at 15, you could have maybe only done 17. So you need to challenge yourself. And if you want to mix it up and lift a little heavier, that's totally fine too. You can go more in that six, eight, or 10 rep range, also amazing. So we're gonna do three sets of this chest press um, exercise. And over time, if you want to play around with different kind of angles, you can take this bench and you can raise it up just a little bit to this angle. And now we have an incline bench press, which is also a great exercise. So it's not that you have to be on the flat angle, it's just showing you that this is chest pressing motion, whether it's here or whether it's here or whether it's here, is working the chest, shoulders, triceps, so very important. Um, and alternatively, if you don't have a bench at home but you do have the pair of dumbbells, you can just do push-ups. You can move, pretend like this does not exist, not enough women know that like just doing push-ups itself is mimicking that exact motion. And if you are not strong enough to do them on your toes, you can start them on your knees. It's an amazing exercise that I highly recommend. Great for your chest, shoulders, triceps as well. So after we've done our chest pressing or our push-ups, we're gonna move on to our shoulder presses, which at this point, although we've been using the same dumbbells, you're probably gonna need lighter dumbbells for the shoulder presses than you use for let's say the squats and the deadlifts. So shoulder pressing, the dumbbells are right up here. Your core is nice and tight. What I don't want you to do is, is you're pressing these overhead. This is what a rep looks like. Press overhead, right back down. I don't want you to be bananaing your back like this. That can actually cause some back pain. The key thing with a standing shoulder press is to keep your core nice and tight. Feet are shoulder width, deep breath, push overhead. Pause, right on down. This is gonna be in the six to 15 rep range as well. Up. Down, up, dumbbells touch, slowly lower, pause, press, down, pause, press, down, press, down, press. So that's my set. At this point, again, I'd rest around 60 seconds. If you feel like you need to rest a little bit longer, 90 seconds, even two minutes, it's totally fine. The key here is this is strength training. This is weight training, it's not cardio. So I want you to do a set that's challenging and make sure you recover. So it's probably 60 seconds to 120 seconds in between sets. I have two more sets of shoulder press. So again, three sets here. And the reason we only wanna do three sets on shoulders is because those shoulders are also involved in our rowing. They're involved in our pressing. So we're getting shoulder activity already, but this is just gonna really give a little extra um, direct specific work to the shoulders, which is really great. After we finish our shoulders, we are gonna do some direct arm work, um, some biceps and some triceps. So we're gonna be using the bench for the triceps, so I'll move this over here, and then we'll do the biceps and the tricep work. So here we are. We get that bench in that very similar position, and we'll drop it down to flat. We're gonna start off with our biceps. We're gonna be doing a standing biceps curl. So standing just like this, um, you can do one arm at a time, or two arms together, I'll demonstrate one arm at a time. So we're gonna do curls, classic bicep curls, but I really want you to focus on feeling your muscles contract as you do this. So we're gonna do this in the six to 15 rep range, three sets, except this is gonna be a super set. So I'm gonna do my set of curls, I'm gonna move immediately to the set of the triceps, which I'll show you in just a second. So the curl comes up, just like this, curl and squeeze, come down nice and slow, count that as one, one. Two, two, work our way up in that rep range. Three, three. And now if you do one arm at a time, the benefit is you can really focus on that arm and that muscle acting like this independently. If you choose to do two arms at a time, also amazing, it's a little more core intensive because the weights are pulling you forward, so you have to keep your core involved. I really don't care which one you choose. 
In fact, I think you should probably try both in time. Um, they're just a slightly different exercise, but the key thing is really focusing on using the biceps to do that work. So let's do a couple more reps, up and down. One, we'll do one more rep, then we're gonna move immediately after the curls to our triceps for this lying French press, or as people commonly call them, skull crushers with the dumbbells. You're gonna lie back just like this. You're gonna press the weights up just like this. Get comfy on that bench. Now all the motion is coming from um, basically my elbow. I'm coming down right here, pausing, pressing right on up, allowing the triceps to extend those weights. And again, we did this right after the biceps curls, no rest in between, this is a superset. And again, we're just gonna do the six to 15 rep range. The weights are coming right outside my head. What I'm not doing is allowing my shoulder to glide back like this. There's no shoulder motion. The shoulders stay locked, the motion is coming from the elbow. And the triceps are extending the elbow. A Couple more. Last one up. Now the weights come down here. You can lightly drop them and you get up. So we did a set of biceps, a set of triceps in a superset. No rest in between. Now we rest. Then we're going to do another superset. So biceps, triceps, and then we'll rest. And another superset, biceps, triceps, rest. Three supersets of the arms. And now we're finishing the workout with two core exercises. So we'll get this bench out of the way. We'll hop on the ground for some planks. So I need you to know that when it comes to weight training and strength training workouts, your core is involved in all of those activities. Your core was involved in those shoulder presses, it was involved in the squats, in the rows, in the chest presses, but we will do a little bit of direct core work. And the first exercise we're gonna do is a plank, but not a regular plank, we're gonna do a high tension RKC plank. So I want you to get into a plank position, hands are on the floor, just like this, feet are extended outwards. I want you to press away from the floor. Shift yourself back just a little bit. Now I want you to squeeze your glutes and your hamstrings and hold this just like this. Create as much tension as possible. And I'm squeezing my legs, squeezing my arms. You should feel yourself shake. And I want you to hold this for ideally 20 seconds to 60 seconds. Hold. Keep on squeezing those quads and those glutes. A regular plank, you see people hang out just like this and hang out for two, three minutes. A high tension RKC plank like this is you're actively engaging everything. Hard, hard, hard. And that's what really gives you the best ab workout. So we're gonna do one set just like that. Now we're gonna rest and we're gonna do a set of bicycle crunches. So you're gonna come back on your back like this, hands, Right back here, behind your ears. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna crunch and twist and twist. I don't have a particular rep range I really care that you get. I would say I'd like you to crunch for probably again around 30 seconds to 60 seconds. You can go slow, you can speed up. What I care is that you get this deliberate contraction. Your chin stays up, you rotate in, you touch, you touch. You get this deliberate contraction Back and forth, we'll do a couple more reps. Up, keep that chin up. What you're gonna wanna do is tuck like this and keep it really tight. That's not as good as this open, twisting crunch, just like this. A Couple more, and we're done. So at this point, we did one set of the planks, one set of the bicycle crunches to end this workout. If you feel like you wanna do a little more core work, that's absolutely fine. But remember, muscles get stronger outside of the gym. So we gave our body a nice stimulus. Now it's time to recover. So that is our workout. We're gonna do that twice per week. So we can use the same exercises, what I'd recommend. Use the same exact exercises on your workout one of the week and your workout two. Why? Because if you do use the same exercises, you can actually get stronger at them. So let's say that you did do those dumbbell squats to start off the exercise and you used 15 pounds. Next time, try 20s, once you can get within a rep range where you feel like you have some mastery. And if you can keep on progressing with the weight, 
That is what's gonna get you stronger over the time. If you continue to lift the same weights, you're never giving your body any kind of challenge to grow into um, and to actually get stronger at. So you gotta continuously give a little more stimulus through heavier weights, which kind of begs um, a couple strategies. One, you should actually track your weights and write down what you use, um, or put it in your phone or do whatever you need to do. And two, once you feel like an exercise is getting easy at a particular weight, or you're hitting your target rep range, increase the weight. And this is gonna be amazing for you. You start doing this twice per week, and after I say maybe four to six weeks, you can change up your exercises. So instead of maybe that front squat that we had there, you might be doing something like a wide stance sumo squat. Instead of that hip hinge um, kind of deadlift motion, you might be doing a hamstring curl on a ball. We can substitute the exercises, and here on our Fit Mother Project YouTube channel, we literally have tons of form tutorials and all the best exercises. You can subscribe to our channel, which I'd highly recommend. Check out those form guides, and we have some more workout videos like this coming your way soon. So subscribe if you found this useful. Hit the like button, give us a thumbs up, and drop a comment below. And if you actually want a completely done for you meal plan, workout, and accountability coaching for me and my team that's produced the results of the women you've seen on this video and right here, then I recommend you scroll below in the description you check out our Fit Mother 30X program that gives you everything. And we're gonna walk you to success, we'll get you stronger, we'll get you leaner, we'll help you lose fat this month. That's Fit Mother 30X, it's in the description. So thank you for being here, my friend. Subscribe to our channel for more videos. I'll see you around the channel and I'll talk to you very soon.